Have you ever told someone that opposites attract or said that you believe in the new US legislation about health care? We all say things like this from time to time, but these are actually examples of dichotomous thinking, thinking in terms of true or false, good or bad, should or should not. I'd like to talk to you about another way of viewing the world, thinking about the world in terms of probability. The problem with the dichotomous view is that it fails to capture the inherent uncertainty and complexity in almost everything that we encounter. So to give a simple example, consider the new US legislation on health care. Now a lot of people going around saying that they believe in it or they think it's good or they think it's bad, but the fact of the matter is this is 900 pages of legislation. The impacts that this have are incredibly complex on things like doctors, hospitals, health outcomes, technological innovation in the healthcare sector. And we really don't know what the outcome is going to be in these areas. We also don't even know what the costs are going to be. The estimates have really varied quite wi wildly. So the fact of the matter is, you can go around saying that you believe in this, you don't believe in this. But if you think probabilistically, you have to accept the fact that there's a lot of uncertainty in the situation. Now when we encounter uncertain situations like this, we naturally tend to try to reduce them to simple true-false questions. Is healthcare a right? Uh, do I believe in big government or small government? But these simple questions are not really capturing the fundamental uncertainty. In order to deal with uncertainty, we have to think in terms of probabilities. Probabilistic thinking is really, really important because of the inherent certainty in everything that we encounter. So let's think about our daily lives. Our love lives are uncertain. Um, our health is uncertain. Our careers are uncertain. If we look at the world around us, we find that there's uncertainty in the economy, uh, uncertainty in the galaxy when we try and model the galaxy, uncertainty in weather systems. Uh, even in the fundamental laws of the universe, there seems to be uncertainty. If we look at quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics tells us that, in fact, you can't even talk about the position that a particle is in. All you can ever talk about is the different the probabilities of finding a particle in, in different locations. So the dichotomous worldview of true, false, good, bad simply doesn't capture this uncertainty. And I'm going to give you three examples to try to illustrate this and to show you how thinking in terms of probability can actually give you a more accurate picture of reality. So for the first example, suppose that you're driving and someone cuts you off. Now very naturally, we tend to think, what a jerk. Uh, and we tend to grow angry in these situations. But this is a dichotomous view because we're thinking of jerk versus non-jerk, bad versus good. Let's think about this in terms of probability. Well, why did this person do this? We don't actually know. Um, it's possible that they knew they were putting us in danger and didn't care. But it's also possible that they, they were absent-minded, that they misjudged the distance, that they're an inexperienced driver. So once we examine the uncertainty in the situation, very often our anger will tend to subside. We'll tend to get a more nuanced picture. So whereas the dichotomous way of thinking led to jerk versus non-jerk, the probabilistic way of thinking leads us to say, OK, well, there's uncertainty, and we don't actually know what's going on here. Let's take a second example. Suppose that you've been uh, occasionally dating for about a year now, and you haven't met a single person that you really liked. Now, many people in that situation would start to feel frustrated and might think to themselves, this is hopeless. And they might even decide that they're going to give up trying. This is a dichotomous view. We're categorizing things as hopeless. But let's think about this probabilistically. From the probabilistic perspective, every time you meet a person, there's some probability that you're going to really hit it off with that person. So in a way, dating is like playing roulette, betting on a number. Uh, Every time you play, you have a small chance of winning. When you win, you win big. Um, and if you actually want to be sure, or at least very confident, that you're eventually going to win, you're going to have to play many, many times. If, on a if typically only about one out of every 200 people you meet is highly compatible with you, you should plan to meet hundreds of people before you expect to have a good chance of actually finding someone that you really like. So where is the dichotomous way of looking at it? Uh, led us to think that this was hopeless and that we should try less, thinking in terms of probability actually gives us a strategy for achieving our goals and it makes us realize that if we double the number of people we meet each month, on average that will reduce the time it takes to meet someone by 50%. So if it normally takes a year, we can reduce that to six months merely by doubling the number of people we meet as long as we can maintain the quality of those people. All right. 
So for my third example, uh, suppose that you've just read a study that said that a certain type of food dye that's been added to foods doubles the chance of getting a certain type of cancer. Now, when many of us encounter this situation, we would, we would naturally uh, think to ourselves, this food dye is dangerous. Uh, and if we found that somebody put it in our food, we would feel disgusted. This is a dichotomous way of thinking, dangerous versus non-dangerous. Let's think about this now in terms of probability. Let's suppose that the type of cancer that the dye doubles our risk for is a quite a rare cancer, occurring, say, in one out of a million people. In that case, a doubling of risk would only take us to two out of a million. It's almost certain that we're actually not going to die from the effects of the food dye. Um, so even if it has a little bit of a danger, the fact of the matter is the danger is very, very small. So whereas this dichotomous way of thinking led us to just feel disgusted and feel like this was dangerous, uh, when we think in terms of probability, we actually get a much more accurate perspective saying not just is this dangerous, but what is the danger? How strong is the danger? So in these three examples, um, in the first example of someone cutting you off on the road, we saw that probability can help us think in a more nuanced fashion. In the second example, in terms of dating, we see that thinking probabilistically can help us make better decisions because it can help us figure out what strategies are likely to improve our lives. And the third example, we saw that it actually can give us more accurate beliefs because rather than just categorizing something like dangerous, not dangerous, we can get uh, a more descriptive view of what the danger level actually is. More generally though, when you view the world in terms of probability, it forces you to recognize the inherent uncertainty in almost everything. And when you're forced to do that, you're forced also to recognize that sometimes you're going to be wrong. And this leads, I think, to a healthier way of, of viewing the world. So the next time that you think to yourself, I believe this or this is true, I'd like you to then ask, but what is the probability?